Hello everybody, my name is Rob Cohey. I'm part of the product management team for our new cloud-based PLM application, Autodesk PLM 360. I'd like to spend the next couple minutes walking you through a brief demonstration of the technology, really just giving you a high-level overview, focusing on the areas, in, or the ways in which I should say, we display information to end users, and then we'll dive briefly into how uh, administrators can go through and configure the system to really make this your PLM. Uh, and that's really the strength of, uh, of the product, the flexibility of it, the ability to really rapidly configure business processes so that you can manage them with, uh, with Autodesk PLM 360. Now, immediately on login, you can see that I've got, uh, I've got things like links to dashboards or um, the, uh, the favorites here. I can set up different numbers of favorites so I can quickly access different pieces of information in different workspaces. Now, Immediately, I'm, I'm already talking about some terminology that may be foreign to people. So what I can do is, upon first login, this is actually what people are presented with. So PLM in, 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 in six easy steps, if you will. So a brief demonstration of how we navigate things like, uh, you know, what's a, what's a workspace, where's the menu, and um, you know, things like where can I access different pieces of information. You can see that. Uh, we're kind of a general overview of the layout and it really what we're doing here is upon media login we're trying to get people educated on common terms analogy uh, terminologies I should say um, and then you know basically giving us a general overview of how we navigate through the system and how you input fields and those types of things so of course that's what I'm here for so we'll we'll go ahead and, and, and do that live rather than going through the tour but the tour is extremely valuable in terms of that very first experience let's learn kind of some terminology and then move forward. So like I was talking about, this demonstration is really going to be more about how we display information to uh, 10 users, not necessarily focused on any one of the particular processes, because we could spend all day on that. But really, you know, as you can see, I've got my dashboard links, things like um, you know, float my cursor over items, I get direct one link access to this brochure, uh, an item within an item master, request for quotes, and so as you can see, I, I'm man managing a number of different processes, but these are my dashboard links, I've got some recently viewed items, so if I've been there, again, I've got one, one click access to them. Another area in which we display information to users is the My Outstanding Work. So I've got things like this uh, this particular change request. So if I float my cursor over it and see what's going on here, um, it's, it's in a state where it's preparing a request, um, the date that it was set on, and if there was any milestones associated to it, I'd actually be flagged through these uh, different milestone status. You can see I have quickly and easily determined what's on time, uh, what's close to being late, and then, of course, you hope that nothing is late. <laughs> And then the other area that, that's proven to be very valuable to our customers is, is my dashboard. Now, this my dashboard is actually running real-time reports on any piece of information that's available to uh, the reporting tool that's built into PLM360. I, any one of these, the, the reports that you generate, you can actually generate a chart from. These charts are accessible, and you can you know, customize this, uh, this dashboard all you want. So if I wanted to add the gross margin by customer and something like um, yeah, items by category, sure, why not? Um, I can then go through and see of all the items in the item master, which are fabricated, which are off the shelf, which are top level assemblies, and then I've got some information from uh, you know gross margin by customer type of thing, but also the RFQs, change orders, so anything that you create a, uh, a report off of that you can convert into a chart very quickly and easily, you can display in your My Dashboard. But again, focusing on the theme of how we display information to users, let's move on to how we navigate uh, throughout the application. Um, so, you know, obviously the, the hyperlinks that are displayed in your, in your shortcuts or your recently viewed, um, you can access uh, any one of the individual records within a, a workspace, um, or you can navigate to your workspaces from the main menu. Now, the way that we've, we've set up this particular instance is we've grouped together a number of workspaces that make sense, you know, to kind of put into buckets, if you will, for things like program management. You can say i got project management, I, I can do some tasking management, some costing, uh, new product introduction, uh, and then things that you would expect, obviously, out of, out of PLM application, things like engineering for items and bombs and manage change and so forth. But areas where, you know, uh, we think, uh, PLM 360 really establish yourself as a, as a significant differentiator is uh, the speed in which you can implement the rest of the life cycle. Um, 
rather than just focusing on areas solely around engineering, we can add, add value to areas like quality, helping to manage your inspection, spawn nonconformances, and corrective and preventive actions and such. A part of the sample data that we have in here, we've got a, an example of one that was passed and one that failed. So let's, let's take a look at one that failed. Now this particular flashlight inspection then, you can see if I, uh, if I edit the, uh, uh, the value itself, you know, users filling out a form here is just as easy as going to a website and filling out a form. I mean, it's, it's, it's really um, that simple to do. You put in your serial numbers, you type in your batch lots, and uh, you can see that spawn NCR on fail. Well, what we've done is we've actually told it to uh, create a nonconformance report um, if, a, uh, if an inspection yields some sort of failure. So again, I'm looking at a single report here, and take a look at the tabs. Now the tabs are the way in which we kind of organize other groups of information. So you know, on the inspection record, we've got the sections for details, the additional details, and these are fully configurable. And we'll certainly get into that. But we have other types of functionality uh, inside of here, then again, focusing on how we're displaying information. Um, we're using some what we call grid functionality to take advantage of you know, doing things like uh, performing a visual operation uh, and, and doing operations uh, for light and quality. And you can see that if it failed, it'll, it, we can display a flag. Now, the difference here is rather than tracking this in Excel spreadsheet, for example, it's now in a database that I can aggregate into a report and analyze for trending and, and, and determine whether or not I need to make a significant change. And maybe it's the inspection process or maybe it's the vendor that I'm, that I'm using so that I can uh, you know, be more informed about the particular decision. Now, we talked a little bit about whether or not this is passed or fail. Well, where does that come from? We've got a workflow associated this. Now, this is about as simple as a workflow as you can do, but as you can see, we've got you know, the closed pass, closed failed, but it has to go through some sort of process to determine whether or not it is passed or failed. Now, upon a failure, we told it to automatically generate a nonconformance. So if I go into the nonconformance workspace, we can then see that we have a level one nonconformance on that flashlight, and it was spawned by what do you know? That inspection. So here's where we begin to link various pieces of information together. So I've got a nonconformance that was spawned by an inspection report that was performed on this item. So now I'm linking three different pieces of information together. Now if I choose to, I can go ahead and, and uh, open up that item master just so I can again show a couple of different tabs that you haven't seen yet. So things like bill of material. We certainly have some bill of material functionality. You would expect that out of PLM tool. But here you go. This is the bill of material. We've got it all displayed out here. And you know whether this bill of material came from a, a bill of material inside of a vault or whether it was um, built right inside of PLM 360, we have bill of material functionality nonetheless. But where used, uh, we, of course, we can uh, add any additional attachments. So if you had some imagery, Word document, uh, you know, whatever other type of data you, you needed to to do. We also have the ability to do some sourcing um, to where if I wanted to determine where this source, you know, where I bought this from or what have you, we can we can bring in uh, some vendors here and what as well. And then associated change order. So again, linking multiple workspaces together so I have quick one-click access and be able to drill down into all of the pieces of information that I need uh, right at my fingertips. So the next thing I want to do is I want to move on to uh, a little bit different area. We talked a little bit about the workspaces and how we use tabs to kind of display information. Um, another very important element of lifecycle management is the ability to associate time to process, right? And the ability to establish milestones uh, along the way. So what I want to do is I want to log into this uh, this project management workspace, and you can see we got an image, nice little image of what we're doing here. We can so yes, we can of course put images in there. We can even do things like mashing up a, a Google Map inside of a workspace as well, which I think is uh, is really powerful to uh, be able to mash up other pieces of web web technology. Google Maps, things like uh, you know uploading a YouTube video rather than uploading a video, or maybe even streaming some sort of a um, uh, maybe a, a slideshow rather than uploading hundreds of files. All of those things are options. It's not the only way in which you could do it. So that's the general theme you'll find with PLM 360 is that we provide a lot of options for you to really configure PLM 360 to meet your needs. 
So let's take a look at this uh, this project. Now, this project, I'm actually bringing in a number of those individual processes that we've talked about. And through project management functionality, I now have a holistic view of all of the things that are required to complete this project, things like new product introductions, things like a uh, number of different tasks. And each one of these could or don't necessarily have to have um, a, uh, a series of milestones, uh, make them time bound so I know when they start, when they end, and where, and, and where they're currently at. But if I take a look at this one, for example, you can see that I've got some marketing collateral that's about 85% complete uh, if I take a look at the, uh, the Gantt chart. Okay, so nice little you know, animated Gantt chart that really allows me to, again, get that, that, that overall view, that holistic view of what's going on with everything. So let's just go ahead and open that one, and, and, and let's, let's progress that down to, uh, to its next step. It's at 85%. Now, as it goes through its milestones, you'll see that the percentage of completion automatically updates in the project. And from a project management standpoint, that's fantastic, right? So I'm actually not even logged in as the right user. So let me fire up a different browser here and log in as marketing so that I can complete this task. Uh, let's just say put in my password. Sure, why not? Now that I'm logged in as another user, take a look at this. Everything that users see with PLM 360 is based upon their role and their permission, the group that they're assigned to. So if I take a look at this particular marketing asset, which is what needs to, uh, to pr progress from whatever state it's in to where it needs to go so I can get to be 100%. Obviously, you know, you do the actual work and not just log in and progress it down the road. But what I can do is I can go into these milestones here. Um, I can see where I'm at, you know, overall percentage complete and such, and, and I'm not quite at 100%, but I'm a little early on it, so that's fine. So I can go into the workflow actions here. But before I go into the workflow actions, I actually want to add another milestone so that I get a little bit more accurate picture here. So what I want to do is go into, uh, I want to establish that once this progresses to legal review, and we'll just, you know, determine legal review is, uh, I don't know, something like the 11th here, why not, um, the day after, sure, legal can do it in one day, <laughs> zero, and then, uh, you know, what we'll put here is 95% complete, right, uh, once we enter in that in, in, into that state. And then now, when I go into workflow actions, I can see that, you know, it's at final approval, I take a look at the map here, and I can see it's set to legal review, which means that, go back into our project here, pull it up a little bit, I should be at not 80% anymore, but rather 95%, and my Gantt chart uh, illustrates that particular change. So the milestones then are directly tied to life cycle events. The, life, uh, the milestones as you progress through and the overall percentage complete then automatically updates the Gantt chart. So that whole connecting uh, the processes to milestones and, and, and putting a time bound uh, aspect to your processes really adds significant value. Now, a couple of the things here. You can see that I'm, I'm going to go into the meeting actions tab, just staying on this uh, particular uh, action here. You can go through here and, and add things like meeting actions. You know, what was the action we met? When was the due date? Let's just grab it today. Who's responsible? Is it marketing? Is it legal? It actually goes through and adds uh, your list of uh, users and then something here. So again, this is using that grid functionality. We saw the grid functionality work earlier. Just now it's actually using uh, a different uh, a different use case for that grid functionality. It's a very flexible uh, and powerful tool here. Now one other thing that I want to do uh, before we close out, and I just want to go into the something as simple as a customer workspace. So I've got this customer workspace here, and I take a look at the at Autodesk. And I talked a little bit about um, you know that Google Map mashup here. Just by typing in the address into this particular record, then I have the ability to put in something like a Google Maps. So it's just adding those additional uh, capabilities of mashing up different technologies so that you can display the right information at the right time to the right user uh, is really powerful. But let's say we're not tracking all of the information that we want to track. Let's say we, we need to make a uh, customization to something like, you know, I want to add a field inside of this section. Well, how do we go about doing that? Well, the way we go about doing that is utilizing our administrator tools. Now, obviously, I'm logged in as the system administrator. So let's just go over here and 
And here's all the list of workspaces, and we have a number of different types of workspaces and such, and we'll get into some of the details when we go to configure your instance of PLM. But I just want to briefly show you some of the um, flexible, insanely configurable nature of the tool. So you can see that we've got the different section here, the details, the company details, address. Uh, here's that map. So if I, let's take a look at that real quick and, and show you just how easy it is to actually grab that Google map. So what we did was we made it a computed field and the computed field is just grabbing some code from Google Maps, reading the, the country, the street, plus the city, plus the state. It's reading all the other fields and then looking to Google Map to display the map. So it's a, it's a pretty useful tool there. And you, you, like I said, you can do the same for things like YouTube videos or you know linking to a slideshow rather than uploading a bunch of images, which is, which is really cool and something our customers have already asked us for. But let's just go through and add a field. And we've got um, Rob's list here. Let's just call it Rob's list. and. What I'll do is rather than just, you know, as you can see, we've got a number of different data types here. So we've got check boxes and radio buttons and, and all kinds of fun things. But let's just create what's called a uh, linking pick list, just going back to that whole theme of linking different pieces of information together. Now, that linking pick list could be created from scratch, but really a linking pick list, you probably want it to link to another piece of, uh, of information that's being tracked in, in, inside of your instance of PLM360. So just for fun here, let's just grab the ISO 9001 sections. We have a workspace that's tracking our ISO 9001 sections, they're revision controlled and all those uh, other fun types of things. But we have other tools inside of here in to do things like make this particular drop down required. Uh, make sure it's unique. If I grab, uh, we have dependency validations and such. And, and one thing I want you to note here is you know, I'm not coding anything. I'm using the same tool set that an end user would use to create these particular records. And then just drag and drop it in place where I want it to be. And there's Rob's list. Now it's going to be added to the details. And as soon as I save the layout, you know, I've talked about this whole concept of instant on. Not only is your implementation of PLM 360 instantly available for you as soon as you um, want us to turn it on and send you the login information, all of the configurations that you change and distribute to your users, again based upon their role and their permission and their login, are also instantly available to those users. So if I go into this customer record here and I hit the customer kind of as a refresh, you can see that that new variable there that Rob's list is now available for me so when I go in here and edit this particular value I can just go ahead and grab that drop down and this is a linking pick list so as I click that I'll go ahead and save it and now that by creating a linking pick list uh, I've now linked a piece of information in another workspace to uh, information in this workspace and now I'm, I'm, I'm providing myself some flexibility to navigate around the, uh, the, uh, the organization, really get to the information that I want so that I can make the most informed decisions, whether it's gathering reports or doing things like dashboarding or linking information together. That's really the, the point behind a lifecycle management tool is, is that, that aggregate of information so that I can be better informed to make the best decision. Now, we could go for hours configuring something uh, inside of this example, but what I'd rather do is spend the next few moments understanding some areas of your business that you would like to improve and, and really just build out a, uh, a solution, a, a workspace based upon those needs around the table. So what do you say? Let's get started.